pleasant morning to each of you. Delighted you are here and that we have this opportunity to study the Word of God together. Appreciate so much your presence. If you're visiting with us, encourage you to take your Bible and study along. I have no intention of belittling anything you might believe and yet at the same time have the responsibility of teaching the truth of God. Should I state something that is wrong, I stand to be corrected. If you'll kindly show me the error, I'll make the proper correction. If you find truth to be taught, we pray that you'll apply it. If you've never been baptized upon your faith, all things have been made ready this morning where you could be immersed into Christ for the remission of sins and be added to the family of God. Enjoy every spiritual blessing in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Or if you need to be restored to Christ in this church family, we'd be glad to pray with and for you. If you have your Bible this morning, if you'll turn with me to the 55th Psalm. Psalm 55. And I would that we would begin reading at verse 1, and we'll read down through about verse 7. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and do not hide yourself from my supplication. Attend to me and hear me. I am restless in my complaint and moan noisily because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they bring down trouble upon me, and in wrath they hate me. My heart is severely pained within me, and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling have come upon me, and horror has overwhelmed me. So I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, I would fly away and be at rest. Indeed, I would wander afar off and remain in the wilderness. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. At this particular time, you'll find David as he is very distressed. David begins by talking about in verse 2 that he was restless. And you know many times restlessness can be a problem in life. And David at this time in his life finds that he cannot receive rest. Then David talks about the oppression of the wicked, how they had troubled him in verse 3. And then in verse 4 he talks about his heart being severely pained and that the terror of death was upon him and that he was overwhelmed. When I look at David, I find a man who's restless. I find a man who's overwhelmed. I find a man who is struggling in life. Now, someone might say, was David not king? That's exactly right. Someone might say, was David not king when Israel was growing in power and might? That's exactly right. Did not David have wealth? That's exactly right. But you know, there are some things in life that money cannot solve, that wealth cannot solve, and prestige cannot solve. And David is looking at his life, and David is wanting rest. So David said in verse 6, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, I would fly away and be at rest. In verse 2, I'm restless. In verse 6, I want rest. But I want to raise you a question. Have you ever looked at that statement, Oh, that I had wings like a dove? Have you ever wished, like David, that you could sprout wings and fly away from the problems of life? Have you ever in life faced something that you just wish that you could get away from? And I want you to look at David for just a few moments of our time and see a man and see what he's going through and observe why David wished that he had the wings of a dove. First of all, in your Bible, notice that David looks out and David sees that his kingdom is divided. David looks out and he sees that there's trouble in his land that there is a rebellion going on, there are people who are rising up against him as king, and no doubt this caused trouble in the heart of David. David saw there's unrest in the land, and as king it was his job to bring peace and to make sure that the people were at war. And yet when he looked out, he saw that his people were divided, and he saw a nation on the brink, and David said, Oh, if I had the wings of a dove, I'd just fly away. I would find rest. David said, I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Notice in verse 7, I would wander far off and remain in the wilderness. I wonder if David's thinking back when he was a shepherd boy out in the wilderness where he didn't have all the problems he's facing now. He maybe was just a shepherd boy, but he was out in the wilderness tending the sheep. But now he's king. Now he's on the throne. And now there's problems. 
And David said, I wish that I had the wings of a dove. But then notice secondly, when David looked out, not only did he see his kingdom was divided, when David looked out, he was heartbroken because of who he saw was leading the rebellion. David looked out and he saw it was his own son Absalom who was leading the people against him. No doubt that brought pain to the heart of David when he looked out and saw the one that he raised leading the rebellion. And David said, oh, if I had the wings of a dove, I'd fly away. I don't want to have to face this problem. This is my own child. This isn't the Philistine Goliath. This isn't the great giant that I faced before. This time, it's my own son. But think about a third thing. David's older now. David used to be able to go out to battle, but David realizes now in his years, he's not able to just go out and fight like he did at one time. And David is looking out, and he sees life differently. He doesn't have the zeal he might have had at one time. And David is depressed. David is down. David is discouraged. David says, I want to get away from everything I'm facing. I want to sprout wings like a dove. I can just see David as he's in the king's palace, perhaps looking over the city of Jerusalem, and he sees a dove take flight. And he says, I wish I could do that. I wish I could just take flight and get away from everything that is bringing me down. But then think of something else. David recognized some memories that no doubt was tormenting. David no doubt looked back on his past sin and he thought of the sin with Bathsheba. He thought of the time he had Uriah put to death and no doubt that brought pain to the heart of David. And he said, oh, if I could just get away from that. If I had the wings of a dove, I would just fly away and I would find rest. But notice something else David's in there. If you drop down in your Bible, notice he said in verse 4, 12, it's not an enemy who reproaches me, then I could bear it. Nor does one who hates me, who has exalted himself against me, then I could hide from him. But it was you, a man, my equal, my companion, and my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked in the house of God in the throne. David said, I've been betrayed. You know the only one who can betray you is a friend. An enemy don't betray you because you already know he's out to get you. But betrayal comes by somebody that you hold near and dear. Somebody you trust can betray you. Someone who you don't trust doesn't betray you. You know they're seeking to hurt you. And there is David saying, I've been betrayed. And David said, I could have handled it better if it was my enemy, but it was my companion, my acquaintance, one we took sweet counsel to give. He's probably talking about Ahithophel. And David said, if I had the wings of a dove, I'd fly away, I'd find rest. I would go back to the wilderness, I would escape the windy storm, I'd get out of the tempest. I'd get out of every problem I'm facing. But David had a problem. David recognizes he couldn't sprout wings. David realizes he can't get away. What do you do in life when you are hurting, when life is tumbling in, there's problem on every hand, your heart is breaking, what do you do? Well, notice what David did, and then we'll look at some things and then we'll close. Notice that David, in verse 16, gives us three things that he does. Notice he says in verse 16, Ask for me. David said, I don't know what everyone else is going to do, but I know what I'm going to do. I can't fly away from my problem. I can't escape the pain I'm facing. So he said, As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Underscore call. He said, I know one thing I can do. I can't get away from the wind and the storm and the problems and the pain, but I can go to my God and my God will save me. Then notice what he says in verse 17. Evening, morning, and noon, I will pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. He has redeemed my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. Notice that second word, cry. And notice what David said. I'm not just going to talk. I'm going to pour my heart out to God. 
I'm going to let God know everything I'm feeling. I'm just going to let God know the pain and the hurt and everything that I'm enduring. I'm just going to cry out to Him. And notice what He said. He's redeemed my soul in peace. That's what David was looking for. David said, I was restless. I was looking for rest. He said, but when I call out to my God and I cry out to my God, I can find peace. But notice the third thing. In verse 22, David brings something else to our mind. He said, cast your burden on the Lord. He shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. David said, I'll call, I'll cry, I'll cast. And that word cast has the thought of a fisherman throwing the net out. David saying, I'm going to give my problems to God like a fisherman throws the net out. I'm going to throw them to God. He will know my burden. And he'll sustain me. David, is he going to remove every problem? Oh, no. I still got the problem. David, is he going to give you everything that takes away you from facing the storms of life? Oh, no. I'm still in the windy storm and the tempest. I'm like a dove trying to get out of that storm. But he said, I'll tell you what I do know. He'll sustain me. And notice, my friend, David had learned where to turn. I want to take that and I want us to think about some application. I want us to think about in our life, have we ever looked for a time to sprout wings and fly away? Have you ever thought about the problems we face in life? You ever thought about church problems? Ever gone through church problems? Ever met a man who enjoyed church problems? I'll show you a man's got something wrong with his heart. But I want to tell you something, church problems arise and they can hurt. And they can be painful and they can make you wish that you had the wings of a dove to get away from them. But what about family problems? Oh, I want to tell you there's great pain in the family when the spouse doesn't get along and the children don't get along. And it just seems like many times in life when we deal with those family problems. And you know what I've learned? We all deal with them. There was a boy here in Middle Tennessee one time, went to a gospel meeting with his dad. And he went into the meeting, he sat down by his daddy, and the preacher got up and he said, you know, my wife and I have never had a fuss, we've never had a crossword, and my children grew up and they never gave us any bit of problem. They always did exactly what we told them. The little boy got out in the truck with his daddy that night and he said, Daddy, can we go back and hear that liar again tomorrow night? I said, that's about right. Because everybody I've ever known has had family problems. And I want to tell you something. They can hurt. They can make you want to fly away. They can make you just want to get out. But what about past sin? When that comes to our mind, we realize we've been forgiven, but sometimes we have a hard time forgiving ourselves. One thing I've always said, if if God has forgiven us, we need to forgive ourselves. But I realize sometimes it's hard to put some things behind us and we struggle with it. But what about when a friend betrays you? What about when someone puts the knife in your back and turns on you and hurts you and says unkind things? Or someone that you never thought would turn on you has turned completely against you? Someone who said, I'll be behind you. When you look back, they're way behind you. And the pain that that can cause. But what about sickness? You know, there are times I've been with people who were sick and they just said, if I had the wings of a dove, I'd fly away. Or that was at least their, what they were saying. They may not have used those exact words, but they were saying, I want to get out of this. I'm tired of hurting. My body is aching. I'm hurting. I've hurt from head to toe. I can't get any relief. And though they may have not have said the same words, David said they had the same sentiment. They wanted to find rest. I'll never forget. When my mother was dying, that my father had to bathe her. And I never forget hearing her say, I'm sorry you have to do this. And I never forget what my daddy said. Well, you'd do it for me. 
sickness comes, it doesn't just hurt the one who's sick, it hurts the family. But what about death? When death comes, what do you do? When you have to bury that one who's so near and dear to your heart, someone who's so special to you, what do you do? You want to fly away. You don't want to have to face that pain. That's something that cuts to the heart. And I want to tell you something, my friend. There have been times in the life of all of us that we wish we had the wings of a dove to escape facing that. So what do I do? I don't have simple answers, but I want to tell you what I think the Bible can help us with. Number one, I don't turn to false comfort. I don't turn to the things of the world thinking that's going to ease my pain because that's just going to cause more pain. And secondly, I don't deny I have the problem. You know, some of my brethren have acted like you should never say you're depressed or down, that you should always act like you're happy. I want to tell you something, my friend. Not every day is a good day for my Christians. There's days I'm anxious. There's days I'm depressed. And I've had brethren say a Christian ought not be depressed. I'm not saying what a Christian ought not do. I'm just telling you there's days you're down. Some days low as a snake. And they say, well, Brother Richard, how are you? Well, I'm low as a snake, but I'll smile since you don't want me to ever be down. I want to tell you, there's times you're down. There's times you're low. There's times you hurt. That's the experience of life on earth. So don't deny it, but don't look for false comfort in things of this world. I'll tell you what we need to do is be like, like Nehemiah in Nehemiah 6.11 who said, Shall a man such as I flee? Nehemiah said, I'm going to stand my ground. And like David, what we need to learn to do is call and cry and cast our care on the Lord. Because that's where we'll get our strength. My God will sustain you. Even Peter comes back in 1 Peter 5, 7 and says, Cast your cares on the Lord. He cares for you. And remember that God hears you. And God is not in that which is causing the pain. God is in you hurting. But I want to tell you what else we need to do. We need to learn to lean on our breath. In Galatians 6, 2, it says, Bear one another's burdens and thus fulfill the law of Christ. I want to tell you, it's important to have somebody in this life to lead on. Because we can't face everything alone. And that's the wisdom of God in the local church. We have people that can help us face the problems of life. No, I can't sprout wings. No, I can't get away from it. But I want to tell you something. I've got someone who will put their arm around you and say, I love you. What can I do for you? But there's something else. I need to learn to lean on Jesus. Take your Bible for just a moment and look in the book of John in the 13th chapter. In John 13, look at a statement made in verse 23. In verse 23 it says, Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of His disciples whom Jesus loved. That's talking about John. Sometimes, I don't mean this literally, but figuratively, in my mind, I've told John, move over. I need to lean on Jesus. I need to put my faith in Him. I need to be near the heart of God because I need God to strengthen my heart. I need His strength. And I have such a beautiful statement, leaning on the bosom of Jesus. In Luke 16, you ever thought about when Lazarus died, the angels came and carried him to Abraham's bosom. That would have been the perfect place for the Jews. Abraham was their forefather. But I want to tell you where I want to be. I want to be at the bosom of Jesus. I want to be near the heart of God. And one day, though I can't fly away from my problems here, one day I keep walking with God and that angelic pallbearers will fly me to the presence of God. And as we sing, I'll fly away, oh glory. There's going to come a day I can't fly away. It's not going to be when I'm facing the trials of this life. It's not going to be through the problems of this age. But it's going to be when God sends His angels for me. 
And what a day that will be. And until then, I have to face some of the great heartaches of life. I have to go through the problems and the trials and the struggles. But Lord, I say, I lean on you. I cast my cares on you. I cry out to you. I call to you. Lord, help me in my distress. And God says, I'm with you. That's why in Isaiah 40, He says to them, as He's closing in Isaiah 40, He says to them, beginning at verse 30, Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fail. But those who wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. I may not have the wings of a dove to fly away from my palms. One day I'll have the wings of an eagle to be with my father. I have to wait on him. But in our darkest hour, Never forget the Father's watch. I've said this probably before, but I just, as a father, it really touched me. One day, Sam was sick and he was in bed at night. I think he might have been in the hospital or something. He turned over and he said, Daddy, are you looking at me? And I said, Yes, son. He said, Good. And he rolled back over and went to bed. And I thought about that in the 121st Psalm. It talks about God who never sleeps nor slumbers. And how many times in the middle of the night have I said, God, Father, are you looking at me? And then I read the 121st Psalm. Yes, I'm with you. Don't ever think I've forsaken you. I'll be here. You lean on me. That's why it meant so much. And I've said this too about Rob. The time I about quit preaching, he said, Son, you lean on me, I'll lean on you, and we'll get through this together. Let's learn to lean on the Lord and each other until the day we fly away to be with God. If you need to obey the gospel, we pray you come as together we stand and sing.